Hi-Fi now comes in a tin can, but also for uh, only $50. Now, aside from the tin can and a couple of accessories, you get a good looking heat dissipation focused design, RIP my trypophobia bros, a very, very small package. This is tiny and a balanced, we'll talk about that in a second, output uh, with uh, power that um, Moondrop themselves calls uh, a high thrust output. Nice. Today, I'm going to give you my opinions and thoughts on this. Oppos, the audio store, sent this out. Moondrop had nothing to do with this review. And like always, all thoughts and opinions here are going to be my own. This thing is punching way above its price bracket, in my opinion, and is actually going to have to make me rethink how I think of dongles uh, going forward because of the price, the power, the sound quality coming out of here in a $50 package for a DAC amp is just wild. The build quality is pretty good, except for a little bit of movement on the actual button end. You can actually hear that. But at this price point, it's really hard to complain about these small things. You of course have the USB-C connection, volume buttons on the side. And for the outputs, you have 4.4 millimeter and 3.5 millimeter. It also has a balanced connection, which has a higher output power than that of the unbalanced connection, which is very typical and common and a characteristic of balanced amplifiers. Either way, very well performing amplifier. On most headphones, I am getting to a loud, like more than I would listen to volume levels at 50% out of my PC. On a phone, it's not quite as powerful, of course, but out of my computer, you actually have like a full powered USB-C port and it gets quite loud. The output voltage out of the 4.4 millimeter is 4.4 volts and uh, I think 2.2 volts for the um, 3.5 millimeter or unbalanced output. The wattage, like all these little dongles, is fairly low. It's 125 milliwatts, but because the voltage is so high, this can actually push a lot of headphones, even though the wattage is not very high though there of course are some limitations now some other specifications are wild too like the signal noise ratio is like 131 db which is nuts the total harmonic distortion is like 0 0.00014 percent or something incredibly low in terms of specifications for a 50 dollars both dac and amplifying device this is pretty on point it doesn't really get a whole lot better especially if you're actually dividing the cost of this thing being let's say 25 dollars for the dac portion and 25 dollars for the amplification portion this is very impressive. Um, I think the real shining performance here is going to be IEMs. And I was using this on some pretty incredible and high-end uh, IEMs called FIR, F-I-R, M5s, which are an extraordinarily expensive and very, very good IEM probably the best IM I've ever heard. This IM has a characteristic that I consider to be one of the best things about it and one of the worst, and that is it is incredibly revealing. It will show you the noise floor on basically any amplifier that has an audible noise floor within the human realm of hearing, and it will show you the downsides and the upsides of your gear's characteristics. If it's shouty, if it's got weird dynamic issues, if it's too uh, sharp or something. Performance for the money here is pretty wild for IEMs. I think this is exactly what this was designed for. Being from Moondrop, who's primarily an IEM company, this is of course no surprise. Now, because this is actually fairly strong, I would highly recommend not wasting extra money on balanced cables for your IEMs. I would stick with the 3.5 millimeter out of this. I felt like this was plenty. Because these M5s are so efficient, I was always under 12% on uh, Windows volume at least. Now, another pair of headphones that I really liked with this was the HD 600s. Dynamic headphones like this, even high impedance ones actually do fairly well on this device. Of course, all of this is respective to the price. It's very good for the price. There's of course better gear as it scales up in price, but you gotta pay for it. Again, under 50% of volume, this thing felt quite fulfilled. HD 600s don't have a ton of bass to begin with, but the quality was uh, definitely there. The high-end fidelity was definitely there. Dynamics were real. They felt uh, very lively and active like I would look for in a good amplifier of any price. I will say though that even on efficient planar magnetic headphones like this new Aria Organic, uh, the it's really not made for planars, I don't think. I would assume that it's a wattage issue here. This just can't drive, especially the bass response to the levels that uh, you're gonna look for and want from an experience like this. And it makes this headphone sound a little bit cheap. It's not as fast or as transient sounding as it can be. Um, the bass response doesn't quite solidify the way that I would expect. It's not as um, present. It doesn't have the impact. It doesn't really have the fidelity there. So I'm gonna say planars for this amplifier. 
it's a no. Now again, all this equipment can get better performance and it will scale with better amplifiers, but you're going to have to pay for it. And if you're legitimately looking for budget hi-fi equipment, even maining this, depending on your headphones and IEM equipment, this could actually be a real smart choice for most people. Let's say these IEMs, right? I feel like I'm getting like 90% of what they're capable of. Now I could spend another $1,000, $2,000 on DAC and amplifier equipment to get it that last 10%, and maybe that's worth it to me, but maybe it's not worth it to me too. So I think everybody here should really draw the line on what they really want to spend the extra money on for that extra 10% for some things. When it comes to planar magnetics, things like the uh, new Ananda Nano, things like uh, Hyphen and Sundara, things like the Odysseys, I think you're really gonna want to upgrade from something like this. I would not start here. Another question I had, does this make the Moondrop Moon River 2, which is about $180 if I'm remembering correctly, irrelevant? Yes, <laughs> pretty much. Um, here's the thing. Comparing the specs, these are extremely similar on paper. Both have 32-bit DACs, though they do have different sampling rates. The Moon River 2 is higher. Both have a dynamic range of 131 dB, which is insane for this price range. 0.0001% distortion rate. And they both share the same voltage output of about 4.4 volts. And quite frankly, I even prefer the ergonomics and shape and look of this design. It's a little bit smaller, a little bit more sleek, doesn't have as many angles that will catch in things like pockets or clothing. I like this one better. So it does beg the question, why uh, would you pay triple the price? The Moon River might sound a shade better, uh, but it's so close that it's probably just copium, to be honest. They don't have what I would consider identical performance, but considering the fact that you could get this and a whole other really good headphone for the same price, this is starting to look like a much, much more appealing option. So is this the best Acam for $50? It's close. It's real close. Um, this is definitely probably top 10, probably top five. It's very, very good. And because it's so simple and so cheap, it's really hard to fault this thing for anything that it does. I think the performance is more than fair for the price. I think the price range is very fair. Um, maybe even a loss leader for Moondrop even. That I wouldn't be surprised. So yeah, this thing, total banger. Definitely going on the permanent list down in the description below, which I would highly recommend checking out. I'm gonna drop affiliate links for this and a couple other things that I mentioned. I would appreciate it if you use those. I know additional cost to you, I do get a small commission from those, but of course, you're not required to use those. Okay, so if you're into small things, uh, I have a very strange review coming up of this. This is a dongle from Wu Audio that literally has spring-loaded tubes inside of it. It's gonna be a wild review. Subscribe for that one. <laughs>